Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey. So usually I try to answer all the comments in my videos. If you have a problem with the tutorial and you post it in the comments, I'll probably see it. But the internet is huge, so every once in a while I randomly google Unity Code Monkey to see if anyone is talking about or having questions with one of my videos. Sometimes they're posted on Reddit, Twitter, or the Unity forums. And when I did that recently, I found out this Reddit post on Program Humor. It's a funny meme that is apparently related to my free course. Basically how this person was enjoying following along with the course, but then was disappointed at some point because of five nested if statements. Looking down here on the comments, there's a reference and a timestamp. It's referring to my 10 hour free course, and it's on the lecture covering the delivery manager. Here it's a code for identifying if the player is delivering the correct recipe. And just like the meme says, the code indeed does have quite a lot of nesting. In total, it is five levels deep. So first it cycles through the waiting recipe list. Then it checks if it has the same number of ingredients. If so, then it cycles through all of the ingredients on that recipe, then cycles through all of the ingredients on the plate, and tests if it has that ingredient, and if so, then yep, it finds the ingredient, and if just one ingredient is not found, then the plate contents do not match the recipe, but if not, then the player delivered the correct recipe. So that's what this logic is doing. And this post is actually the perfect example for me to say two very important things, which is how I'm not necessarily perfect, and secondly, how there are always many solutions to a single problem. What I mean by that is that even though I have quite a lot of experience, I've been programming for over 20 years, but just because I do something in some way, it does not mean that it is the absolute best way, or more importantly, it does not mean it is the only way. Speaking specifically about this example, now, in general, if you want to write good clean code, you should minimize the amount of nesting, and in most cases, 5 is likely way too much, so this is definitely a good point. But remember, the most important of all of the clean code rules is simply to help you minimize complexity and make the code easy to understand. That's the ultimate goal. All of the rules like don't do more than three levels of nesting, or pick the right name for the variable, or focus on decoupling. The goal with these rules is simply to help you write better code that is easier to manage and understand. So with that in mind, looking at this code, the question is, is this understandable? I can say that I made this course four months ago, so it's definitely been a while since I was really deep in this code base. And yet, honestly, within 10 seconds of looking at this code, I could immediately tell what it was doing. I can see that it's cycling through the list of waiting recipes, I can see that it's testing the same number of ingredients, see if all of them match, and if so, the recipe matches. So for me, even though this technically breaks the rule of going over three levels of nesting, it still achieves the ultimate goal of being understandable. However, again, like I said, I'm not perfect, I'm just one person. So while this is perfectly understandable to me, it might not be to you, and if so, that's perfectly fine. Perhaps you really prefer to follow that rule like a law, if so, then you could refactor the code. You could do it like this. So first of all, instead of checking if they have the same number of greens, you could check if they don't have, and if not, you continue. This way, the rest of the code is not inside the second nesting level. And then after that, you can obviously extract the logic into a separate function. So here's a simple function, do the plate contents match the recipe, and then a second one, does the plate have a certain ingredient? So now with this code, it all works exactly the same, does the exact same thing, and now it only goes up to two levels of nesting. The logic is nicely separated into separate functions. So the big question is, is this code easier to understand? Now for me personally, I find them both equally valid. I have no trouble following either of these. But again, that's just me. If you prefer the second one, then absolutely go ahead and do that. Remember that what you see in my videos is not the only way to do something. There are always a ton of methods and different approaches to solving any problem. For example, I've made some videos on multiple ways you can find targets or multiple ways to shoot projectiles. In most cases, there's always more than one way to achieve a certain result. Now, what I can promise you is that when I make a tutorial on something, like for example, how to pick up objects, the code in that video achieves the desired result. So in that example, the code in that video does teach you how to pick up objects, but it absolutely does not mean that's the only way to pick up objects. Maybe your game has a specific design where you need to pick up objects in some specific way, and if so, perhaps a different approach would be better in your specific scenario, so always remember that tutorials are really just starting points, they're meant to guide you in the right direction and give you ideas, but every game is different, so every implementation will be slightly unique. And also, even though I'm quite experienced, I'm definitely not the best program in the world, I'm constantly learning. One example is, a very long time ago I made an inventory system, in there I taught the tutorial on how to make it just like I would do it back then, and back then I preferred making systems as much code-based as possible, so for the items I defined them using an enum, and that does work, the code in that video is perfectly functional, and it's a perfectly valid way of doing an inventory system. But if I were to make that inventory system again nowadays, I would use scriptable objects for the item definitions. Kind of like I did in the Hydronier crafting video. 
I would do that simply because nowadays I do value using the editor a bit more and being less strict on just using code. So once again, multiple valid ways of achieving the exact same result. As you grow as a developer, you might change what is your preferred way of doing something and that's perfectly normal. And like I said, I'm not perfect. So while in this case, personally, I don't think the way I did it is a mistake. In other cases, it absolutely could be possible for me to make some mistake. I have a lot of experience, but I'm definitely not John Carmack. That's the same for me as for any instructor. Whenever you watch some tutorial, you might indeed notice some mistake the instructor missed, or maybe just some better way of solving the same problem that works best in your specific scenario. That's perfectly possible. So all of that to say, take what you learn from my videos or any tutorial simply as guides to help you on your game dev journey, but don't be afraid to adapt it to your own personal style and way of working. Remember, the ultimate goal is really to learn how to make games. So grab whatever knowledge you can find from any source and use it to help you achieve that goal. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.